Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the words of the Chavitz Chaim. And he says like this today, This concept of Lashon Hora, flattering people, losing your chilek, your portion in the world to come, doing things that are really deceiving and insidious against others. He says, you look at the Pasuk, the verse in Mishle, Shinema, like it says, the Samta Sakin Belayecha, put a knife, Belayecha, like in your throat, in Baal Nefesh Ata, if you are a Baal Nefesh, if you are, if you are a God fearing, serious person who wants to avoid doing sin. And he says like this, Vechayev Adam Limsa Atzmai, the Sakana. A person is actually obligated to put themselves in a situation of danger. And do not allow the sin of Lashon Hara to be something that you become part of and that you commit. And at the time that you hear Lashon Hara around you and the like, make sure that you do nothing at all to encourage the people that are speaking Lashon Hara. Don't do anything that's going to prolong the conversation so that people will see that you are also a part and parcel of the Lashon Hara conversations. You really have to put yourself into a sakana, dangerous situation in order to avoid ever speaking one word. Even one gesture, one body language, one movement of your finger, your eyes, raising your eyes, cr- making some kind of movement with your lips that shows that you are that you are in agreement or that you second that idea that was Lashon Hara that was spoken. If you do something that shows that you are agree with the story of Lashon Hara that's being told, someone's telling over nasty words of Lashon Hara and you're nodding your head, yes, yes, yes. So you just committed the sin of accepting Lashon Hara and you're contributing to the Lashon Hara over here. Why? Because you're encouraging them to continue going on. <coughs> and this is where the words of our sages are very pertinent. And it says over there the following, It's better for a person to be called a shaita, a fool, all the days of his life, and not to be considered a rasha, a wicked person, for even one moment in the eyes of Hashem. So what? So everyone's talking to Hashem Hara, and you walk away from the conversation, or you try to get them to stop, or you just sit there like an elam, like a deaf and a mute, and you don't say a word. I, people say, what's wrong with this person? They're so weird. What's the matter with them? And they start laughing at you. What's, what's this guy's problem? What's this girl's problem? She doesn't like Lashon Hara, everybody speaks Lashon Hara. Says the, says the Mishnah over there that he's quoting, you should look like a fool in the eyes of everybody else in this world all the days of your life. Rather than to be the person who speaks Lashon Hara, and for one moment that you speak Lashon Hara, look like a Russia, like a wicked person in the eyes of Hashem. Whose opinion do you care about more? What the Velt, what the world thinks about you, or what HaKadosh Baruch Hu thinks about you? Say Chazal, we should only care what HaKadosh Baruch Hu thinks about us. Because at the end of the day, that's eternal. And that's something that lasts forever and ever. And if we are basing our actions and our lives and our conversations and our speech on finding popular opinion, favor in the eyes of the people around us, so what? They're going to disappear and you're going to disappear. At the end of the day, the only one that's left is your neshama and the ribay neshailam. And since HaKadosh Baruch is going to peer in to your soul and he's going to judge you carefully for every single word of Lashon Hara that you said, better that you should be foolish in this world and not look bad in his eyes forever. And that's even if you know that you want to give some kind of rebuke to the person who's speaking Lashon Hara, they're not going to listen to you. So then don't say a word. If you know he's not going to listen, don't say a word. But if you know he's going to listen, then you're obligated to give Teichacha, to rebuke him. Gam, Kain, Alza, even on this case over here, meaning it's better 
that if you know that he's not going to listen, <clears throat> just be quiet. So look like a fool. And if you know that he is going to listen, then you have to give him to even if other people say, what's wrong with this person? Why is he rebuking over here? Nevertheless, you should do it. I'm going to explain, God willing. We'll explain later on, the obligations that you have to try to end the conversations of Lashon Hara, to give rebuke to those that will listen and stay away from those that are Bali Lashon Hara, that speak Lashon Hara, and they're not going to listen to you anyway. Just find a new group of friends, a new circle of social circle of people to sit around with. You want to go get a coffee and you want to sit in shmuz, make sure you're shmuzing with people that don't say Lashon Hara. You want to hang out on a Motzi Shabbos, you want to hang out on a Tuesday night, you want to get on the phone late at night and talk to your friends, just make sure it's not people that are sitting at 1 o'clock in the morning saying Lashon Hara about every other kid that's in the school. Be careful. And because even though that people will say, wow, you're so cool, everybody's, everything's great, it doesn't matter, says the Chavetz Chaim. You will better to look like a fool in this world than the Chas V'chalil look like a Russia like a wicked person in the world, in, in the eyes of Hashem, even one moment. Have a wonderful day.